When retrofitting your existing LT15 sawmill with a new trailer package, you first need to disassemble your LT15 to prepare it for the trailer. Start by removing the knots on the feed rope at each end of the mill, and then pull it free from the bed assembly. Now remove the lower mast retaining bracket from the mill and set it aside for reassembly later. Next, you'll have to remove the head and mast assembly from the bed frame. Start by lowering the head all the way down to the bed frame so that it can be lifted using the approved equipment. The required weight capacity of the equipment to lift this is 800 pounds minimum. This can be done with a forklift, hoist, or crane. Pull and hold the locking pin back and slowly lift the head up just enough to free it from the bed frame. Once free from the bed frame, release the locking pin and repeat this process for the remaining locking pin. Once both pins are free of the bed frame, lift the head and mast assembly up and away from the bed frame, setting it aside for reassembly later. With the head and mast assembly free of the bed, remove all of the leveling legs from the bed frame using a 1 and 5 16 inch wrench. Make sure that the bed is lifted off the ground with enough space for you to work underneath it. It is time to break down the shipping container holding the trailer package. With a hammer, pry loose the boards at the top and sides of the pallet. Once the top and sides are removed, you can start unloading the pallet. Begin with placing the boxes aside for later. To begin removing the trailer pieces, you'll have to unbolt the brackets securing the pieces onto the pallet. Remove the bracket securing the hitch to the axle. Then remove the shipping bolts on the four shipping brackets and trailer chains. There will be six bolts in total. While in this area, cut the strap securing the hitch and axle to the pallet. The last step is to remove the wheel covers bolted to the pallet. Set these aside. We can now remove the pieces of the trailer. Start by pulling the trailer hitch out from under the axle and place at the front of the bed frame. With two people, lift the axle and place near the intersection of the last two bed sections. Take the remaining mounting square piece and place near the intersection of the first and second bed sections. It is now time to unpack the boxes that were on the pallet. Discard the packaging material and unpack the outrigger supports, trailer lights, and packages containing all the necessary nuts and bolts. Place the outrigger supports as shown. Lastly, put the trailer lights at the rear of the bed sections. Set the remaining pieces aside for later use. Unpack the last box containing the trailer outriggers. Place the outriggers next to the outrigger supports for installation later. Starting at the front of the bed frame, take the first outrigger support and place on the underside of the bed. Secure the support to the existing brackets located on the inside of the bed frame. Use the provided bolts, spacers, and nuts. Make sure to tighten these bolts. Next is to move down to the square support. With help, lift and secure the support using the existing brackets, just as before. Use the provided bolts, spacer, and nut. Tightening when all the bolts are in place. Next, move to the rear of the bed frame. Secure this bracket as you did with the first. Make sure to tighten all the bolts. 
For the next steps, you'll need to raise the bed further off the ground. This is easiest to achieve with a forklift, crane, or hoist. Once raised, you can now place four of the outriggers onto the supports. The outriggers can rotate up to 90 degrees, facing straight down when you're ready to cut, or parallel to the bed frame when you're ready to travel. Be sure to insert the locking pin to prevent the outriggers from moving in either position. Place two outriggers on both the front and rear supports. The last outrigger support can now be placed. It will be attached to the fifth bed rail from the rear. This support has wings that go on either side of the bed rail. Line up the holes and insert the bolt and washer. Place the nut on the other side and tighten the bolt. Make sure that the added bracket for the optional winch is on the rail side of the bed. When finished, place the outriggers and secure with a locking pin. We can now secure the axle to the bed. Lift the bed with the forklift for extra space when lining up the axle. Center the axle under the bed frame, lining up the interior brackets with the pre-drilled holes in the axle. Lower the bed so it sits on top of the axle. Secure the axle to the bed frame using the provided bolts, spacer, washer, and nut. There will be four to place and tighten. With the axle secured, you can now lower the outriggers and level the bed frame. Rotate the nut on the top of the outriggers counterclockwise to do this. You also no longer need the forklift to support the weight of the bed frame. Go ahead and lower the bed frame so its full weight rests on the outriggers. With the bed completed, we can now attach the tail lights and the hitch. Begin at the rear of the mill and feed the tail light cables through the bed frame as shown. Make sure the cables are pulled through to the opposite end. With the cables in place, you can now attach the tail light. Insert a bolt into the pre-drilled hold on the tail light. On the other side, place a spacer onto the bolt, then insert the bolt into the mounting bracket. Make sure the groove in the tail light rests on the bed frame as shown. Use a washer and nut to secure into place. Repeat for the opposite side. There are two bolts in total. On the front of the bed frame, place the hitch onto the mounting pegs. Make sure the cables fit into the pre-cut groove to avoid pinching. Use the provided nuts and bolts to secure the hitch to the bed frame. There will be two on the inside of the bed frame and one on the outside. Leave the rail side bracket for next. On the rail side, insert the bolt into the bracket, and on the other side of the bracket, screw on a nut and a lock washer followed by the rope bracket, another washer, and a spacer. Turn the bolt until it comes out of the other bracket. Use a nut to secure and tighten into place. Plug the appropriate cables into the lights on the hitch. There will be a light on each side. Once plugged in, run the cables under the hitch frame and secure with zip ties to prevent them from hanging loose. Underneath the hitch, make sure the white grounding cable is held in place by the existing bolt and nut. Be sure to lead the remainder of the cable towards the hitch, leaving a long portion loose for connection to the vehicle. Using a forklift, crane, or hoist, lift the head and mass assembly and place onto the bed. Slowly lower the head and have somebody guide the roller assemblies onto the bed rail. Make sure to pull the locking pins out so the mast will drop onto the bed rail. Reattach the rail guide to this leg of the mast. Take the included travel pin and remove the bolt and securing pin, which dangles from the wire looped onto the bolt. The travel pin slides over the blade adjustment arm bracket. Once in place, return the bolt and securing pin as it was before. The securing pin will hang free from the bolt. Now, install the rotating travel pin base. Use the provided bolt and nut to secure into place. Don't tighten too much or the base will not rotate. The head can now lower and the travel pin will rest into its base, using the securing pin to prevent the head from lifting during travel. There is a hole in the travel pin for this. Since the mill is raised off the ground, we need to lower the dial and crank that raises and lowers the head. 
To do this, go to the chain located beneath the hand crank and remove the master chain link using pliers. Once unhooked, remove the chain from its holding place. With the master link removed, we can adjust the dial at the top. On the back of the dial, remove the two bolts holding the gearbox cover. Set the cover aside. With the cover removed, now remove the two bolts located on either side of the chain gear shaft. Be careful, when removing the second bolt, the dial will rotate downwards. Keep hands on the outside of the dial and slowly rotate it. After rotation, remove the bolt nearest the center. Line up the bolt holes and replace this bolt, now going through the orange bracket. Also, replace the three other bolts in this area. With those four in place, remove the fifth bolt on the bottom that we left on earlier. There will be two empty bolt spots at the bottom. Place the provided orange cover over the exposed gears. Take the lower portion of this cover and place over the last two remaining bolt holes. Secure into place using the bolts that came from the gearbox and orange cover. There are four, two on the front and one on each side. Be sure to tighten these bolts. Replace the chain to its original position and secure back into place using the master link that was removed earlier. With that complete, take the reflector stickers and place on the bed frame. Two yellow ones go on either side of the hitch end, and two red ones go on either side of the rear. The remaining two reflectors go on the head of the mill. Lastly, place the LT15 GO stickers on the top of the head mast assembly. Now we're ready to finish assembly. Tie a knot on one end of the rope. Hook that knot into the bracket, then start routing the rope through the mast. Make sure you go over top of the pin and around the inside groove of the lower idler roller, closest to the bed rail. Bring it up to your crank handle pulley, go over the top and loop around two times toward the feed handle. Then go to the outside groove of the lower idle roller. Then back through the mast. Once again, making sure that you're over the top of the retaining pin. Pull the remaining rope back to the rear of the mill. Tie a knot in the rope and put into the rope bracket. If the rope is too loose, the feed handle will slip. To tighten, remove and retie the knot closer to the saw head until tight. If you purchased the optional manual winch, you can install that now. If not, proceed to the LT15 operation. First, unpack the pallet by removing the bolts and straps securing the pieces into place. The loading rails can be taken and placed onto the resting brackets on the other side of the bed frame, as shown. Now remove the winch and mounting bracket and place next to the axle. Take the winch mounting bracket and secure it into place on the rail side of the mill, right in between the axle and outrigger support. Use the provided bolts and nuts to tighten into place using the existing pre-drilled holes. Once tight, lift the winch and hold into place against the bracket. Slide the large pin through the bracket and the winch. Secure with the provided washer and locking pin. With that piece locked, rotate the winch upwards and let drop into place. That concludes our assembly. Please check your user manual for more details on this process, or you can always call Woodmiser Customer Service if you have any more questions.